Good evening and welcome to the policy subcommittee meeting. Um, today is Tuesday, February 15th, and it is uh, the time is 6.01 p.m. I call the meeting to order. Um, I'd like to take a roll call for the um, members that are present. Uh, Mr. Homer? Here. Ms. Ehlers? Here. Mr. Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. Uh, and chair is present, Joyce Azak. Thank you. So um, item number one on the agenda is discussion on the DESI mask requirement. I'm here as well. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, Mayor Sullivan. <laughs> Thank you. Shall I get a text? <laughs> um, discussion on DESI mask requirement is item number one. All right, so I can frame it. Um, so um, the commissioner and the governor on February 9th, 2022, um, they, after consulting with their medical experts and the state, state health officials, the commissioner will not renew the state mask requirement when it expires on February 28th. So effective Monday, February 28th, the mask requirement from DESE is lifted statewide. Uh, that's the Monday right after um, the vacation. Um, DESE also put in their memo, this is a memo that came out to all superintendents, as always, any individual who wishes to continue to mask, including those who face higher risk from COVID-19, obviously should be supported in that choice. So um, my recommendation tonight was that we would follow the DESE uh, guidance and lift the mask mandate um, and make it obviously optional for those who want to continue to wear masks, obviously where they would be able to. And those who don't would not be mandated to wear a mask. Thank you. Any members have Ma any questions? Madam Chair, if I could just oh, also, sure. um, so just to follow those, um, it is mandatory to wear them still on school buses yeah, and vans. That's, a, um, that's, a federal that's right. So that will still be incorporated. Um, I did speak to Dr. Rick Herman, a medical consultant for the city. He is on call. If anybody has any questions, we can reach him tonight. I know uh, the superintendent spoke to Dr. Linda Cahill, head of the school uh, nursing department as well. So. I, I, as the mayor and as a dad of two kids in this system, I support this. Uh, I think it should be a personal option for the parent and the guardian and loved one if they want their children to still wear it. Um, the numbers are drastically be, being reduced, not just in the city or in the Commonwealth, but in the nation, which is a really great thing. Um, but again, if someone chooses to uh, wear a mask, they should be able to do that. Uh, and that would be my vote tonight to honor the recommendations, but just to put on the record that within those recommendations, there is a mandate for vans and for bus transportation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, any members have any questions or comments? Um, I'm gonna just make a, sorry, Mr. Sullivan, did you have your hand up? Well, I just, was, I was gonna make a motion. Oh, we're, we're not ready yet. <laughs> oh. So I just wanted to make a quick comment. I'm sure as, um, as many uh, other members are getting the calls and the emails that I've been receiving myself, um, you know, the past uh, probably about a week or so. And a lot of the emails we're getting, you know, the parents are advocating for their children. You know, they do not want the masks. I've had teachers that have reached out that do not want the masks. So giving them, you know, the choice, I believe is, you know, the fair thing to do. Um, we have we discussed, you know, as far as um, after February vacation, a potential date, if we were to extend it, just so we can see what the numbers are, um, you know, given, given, you know, the studies and, and it, as far as Christmas break, Thanksgiving break, things like that. I mean, like I that. have information, because I, I have information on where. Yeah, if we can just see where we are, because there's usually oh, some would, kind of an outbreak um, after a long extended vacay or, or a holiday. So I know that was another concern that a lot of them were, were mentioning to me is they'd feel a little more comfortable if we had a little bit of a break, um, you know, hold on to the max, masks maybe for a week or two once we know what our numbers are and see if we have any outbreaks. Um, so um, Jess and, and Linda Cahill were able to put this together as requested. This was the... Uh, numbers after the Thanksgiving break and then after the longer holiday break. Um, these are the two weeks after each one that shows you um, the reported cases, positive cases after the two weeks after um, each of the breaks. Um, for staff and students, uh, students is in the gray, staff is in the red. Obviously the cases jump um, after the holidays. Um, but obviously, as the mayor said, they're drastically dropped now. But 
there's the, I just want to make sure you had this information that was requested. Thank you for having them prepare that. I mean, I know the numbers have dropped, but the other concern is, is as far as keeping track of the data, we're, with a lot of at-home tests, um, we're not seeing those numbers, and that's the biggest concern that I'm, I'm getting in my emails and my calls. So there's a lot of undocumented cases. Um, so it's tough to see what our numbers are. Um, you know, as of January 6th, you know, it was, it was up there. And, you know, we're going into February, February winter break. And if we were to extend it just a short time to see how we are after the break, and then just so we don't have to come back and vote on it, just see if there's a spike in the numbers and just have a short, a short, like maybe a one or two week extension, just so we're not starting all over again. Um, how are our numbers at our schools? I mean, I'm sure they're down. Yeah, they're all, they're all they're down. down. Yep. Okay. Um, any members have any comments or, or questions? Ms. Ehlers? The only thing I would say is um, I actually, not that this is a surprise, but I 100% concur with Mayor Sullivan. I think at this point where we are with COVID, it's a personal choice. I think it's a parental personal choice for their children. I think these numbers are great. Thank you, Superintendent Thomas. But at the same time, once we make this decision, I think February vacation is going to be irrelevant because at that point, people are going to just choose to be and do what they want. And I think at this point, with everything we've been through, it's time to give our parents the option. And I think if they feel that their children should come to school with a mask, so be it. But if they don't, they don't. I, and that's just my feeling at this point. I think we have to put this in the hands of the parents. And it's also important to point out that is, in my opinion, it's time to see the smiling faces again of, of children. Um, I just think it's time. Um, this has been a long, as we all know, the studies indicate, you know, because we've been, I appreciate everybody who reached out uh, to the public, everybody that sent emails, sent articles to support their emails and studies and, and you know, doctor's opinions, and it's much appreciated, and I read as many as I could. Um, but, you know, I agree to the fact that, you know, these kids have suffered a lot, um, adults as well, um, but, you know, it's it's time for us to see their smiling faces again, and it's just, they've been through a lot. I've decided that I'm going to reinvest in lipstick once this mask comes <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Sullivan, uh, just to kind of piggyback on some of the the data, um, hospitals. The census numbers are down uh, drastically in a positive way, which is great. At Brockton Hospital Signature, Good Samaritan Medical Center, the VA, um, Neighborhood Health Center, I do a call every Monday and Friday um, with all those people, plus Father Bills, Mainspring, and High Point, um, and the numbers are down. So we will not, let's make it clear, we will not, um, not discontinue our uh, best practices of disinfecting the schools, providing you know anything that the students and staff don't forget the staff needs as well. So again, I'm going to vote tonight to to honor what Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Plato did and Commissioner Riley. Uh, you know, but just those watching tonight, and I know we have one visitor here, know that you know it's always been about protecting the health and safety of the students and staff, and so we won't ever let our guard down on that, and, I, and Mike and I have talked about that. So again, PPE will have that. If people need that, um, the at-home test kits, uh, I spent $250,000, plus we got some from Neighborhood Health Center, so we're giving those out. The school is getting their own allotment as well. Now, one thing you, you said, uh, um, Madam Chairman, is, is the at-home testing, um, and you're correct on that. So if you're at home and you test it, you're not mandated by DPH to incorporate that into any logistic. Um, but we're still, as a city, we're still doing contact tracing. Uh, we've actually hired additional staff. The school nurses are still helping on that as well. So even though, you know, in my vote, it's let people choose, uh, know that behind the scenes, the Board of Health and, and uh, Neighborhood Health Center and DPH, uh, we're still doing the booster clinics uh, and, and first and second shots over at Shaw Center. We're still doing the testing there and at Massasoit. So um, even though we're, we're trending in the right direction, and you know, I know how I'm going to vote tonight. Um, I just want all the parents and the students and staff to know that we are not going to take our foot off the pedal. We can't, and we won't. Thank you. 
Thank you. And we'll um, also continue the Saturday clinics. Yep. The, the vaccine clinics will continue. We had one at North this past weekend. They've been at the unknown. So every Saturday, and um, they'll continue with, with the clinics, which is important. As you know, we, every, all of our rooms have pure air purifiers, offices, you know. Um, we have a ton of the wipes and <laughs> no, we still do. thousands and thousands of cases of wipes and bottles of hand sanitizers. And, you know, it's just we'll continue, obviously, to do all that we have to do um, to make sure the environment's safe. Thank you. I mean, that, that's the key, even though um, depending what the decision is tonight, we, we still have to keep maintaining, you know, wiping down the desks, sanitizing the classrooms, hand sanitizers. Um, you know, just if we, you know, do away with these, it doesn't mean that we have to put our guard down. We have to keep up um, with keeping everyone safe. You know, less, if we can keep our numbers down, that's, that's ideal. Um, any other members with any questions or comments? Mr. Rodriguez. Um, I know, you know, there's a, you know, actually the same concern with the vacation coming up in February. Um, you know, there's going to be a spike. Um, I think there's enough uh, testing sites in the programs that we have um, from the states from the federal level um, to make sure that, you know, we, we're using all the tools that we have. Um, the only thing that I don't agree with is, um, you know, the mask being worn on a bus. You know, how, you know, how many do you have? 30, 40, 50 kids and then you know, if you look at, you know, Brockton High, you're in a cafeteria with 300 students. It makes absolutely no sense. I don't know um, what Harvard student or doctor or whoever or whatever school came up with this guideline because it honestly does make no sense. But um, I'm with the mayor, and uh, I support that, you know, these masks, you know, disappear and leave it up to each family member. Um, and you're right, Mr. Rodriguez. The and the, and the commissioner said this. I mean, they would waive. They can't waive the, the bus because it's a federal requirement. Which you're right. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. And, and then but, you, you know, you know, you, you I know. think that you know we'll have to wait for the federal government to waive that. But you know, the state doesn't have the authority to waive it until the federal government does. But you're right. It doesn't make any sense. I agree and, with you. You know, and then we look at you know all the data. I mean, we've all received uh, all the emails. If anybody's watching. Um, you know, you know, we share your concerns, and you know, I wear this every day at work. Um, but uh, yeah, I think he, moving forward, you know, we need to, you know, let these kids, you know, see their smiles, see these kids smiles again, and you know, look at the data, especially with uh, mental health um, part of it. You know, suicides up, you know, dramatically in the younger population. So um, I support this highly. Thank you. And thank you, Superintendent, for clarifying. I was going to ask you to clarify um, because it is federal. That's why um, on the busing. So, again, we, we've, we've all received the emails. We received the phone calls, the emails. We hear your voices. And um, we have to go with the majority of what, you know, our families are looking for. And um, I agree with the, the mayor and the superintendent in our committee. Um, any any other questions comments? I you know I do I do have one question sure, to the superintendent. Um, children that participate in band in Brockton Public Schools, my my son has the trumpet, and because of COVID they had to put these right. these black felt things. Will that be removed, Mike? Do you know that? We're waiting for that guidance okay. to come out. That's forthcoming. Okay. Um, they did say that we should have that before we come back to the from the vacation. Good. Okay. Updated guidance around music, singing, and, and All instruments. That. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. No other questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And I know for I think um, the MIAA as of the 28th was going to drop the mandate for uh, athletics, um, so the indoor athletics. So. Starting on the 28th, the MIA is also getting rid of the ma making athletes wear masks inside as they play basketball or volleyball or any indoor sport. So, I mean, all the pictures you see anyway, the, the masks are down at the chin. So You should uh, see them swimming right. with them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, no other comments? Okay, so are we ready for um, Someone have to make Mr. A Sullivan, you had wanted to make the motion? Yes, uh, I would like to make a motion that this school committee adopts Jesse's regulations as well as the DPH as far as the COVID-19 goes, that we adopt it. I'll put that in the form of a motion. Yeah, the masks will be dropped on That's the 28th. 
effective on the data as defined in that order, right? And Correct. it should become optional. And I'll just add that it is optional. If somebody on the staff or a student wants to wear a mask, they can. There's no question about it. A motion has been made. Do we have a second? Second. I'm going to do a, um, a, a, actually, we'll do a roll call vote. Um, Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Homer? Yes. Ms. Ehlers? Yes. Mrs. Mendez? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. And I am a no, and I'm going to say no for one reason, that I would prefer a one-week extension, just one week, um, to see our numbers. And I'm a yes. I, Oh, I apologize, yeah. Mayor. You're next. I keep forgetting. I'm not used to sitting over here. Um, and, and the mayor is a yes. So that was um, my reasoning for my no, is just a one week, just one week, and then we can give them their option. I just want to see the numbers. But um, so that's... On the motion, though, I, I do want to thank uh, Dr. Rick Herman, Dr. Ina Montes here, Dr. Linda Cahill, all the nurses uh, at that work. There's three of them that work for... Uh, our, our Board of Health, and there's just so many dedicated ones working for Brockton Public Schools. They've been at the front line of this for a long, long time. So on behalf of the school committee, I, I just want to thank all of them for their dedication, their professionalism. They've saved lives, and, uh, and it's been a real collaboration. It's been wonderful to see. So I just wanted that to be on the record. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so a motion was made and properly seconded. Question on the motion. Sure, Mr. Sullivan. I just wanted to add one thing. I, uh, I seen that... Uh, was either yesterday or the day before, that if a child or student is going to the nurse's office, they have to have a mask on? Not, not under the new. Under the, they don't have to do it on this? On the new one, no. No, okay. No, not, not when the mask mandate. As of the 28th, no. As okay. Right now, they have to wear a mask everywhere in the building. But as of the 28th, they'll be optional. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay. Um, and I can say we also want to just continue to let parents know that they can opt in to the the take the take home tests anytime uh, we have hundreds of tests that come in every week um, for students to take home so you can if you're not opted in and you want to this contact your uh, your child's school and you can you'll get a test every week for each child that you have um, and that's still this and obviously anybody that wants to continue to have a mass we have thousands and thousands of uh, max available for anybody that wants one so that will, that will continue thank you having the um the tests available is going to help the families i mean before they weren't as available so people will go into the testing sites and so at least now we have them you know and, and hopefully that'll help us um keep this under control um so item number two other business do we have any other business okay um can i get a motion to adjourn Motion to adjourn. And uh, second? Second. Our, a motion was properly made by Mr. Homer, seconded by Mrs. Ehlers. Um, all in favor? Okay, meeting adjourned.